Hi, I'm David Hamlin. And I'm Jacob Hofer. And we are going to be talking about the wedding planning problem. The weddings are a ton of fun. You know, they're a great party. You know, people are getting married. Everyone's having a good time. Except sometimes you got people like Perrin and Kevin who just totally ruin the vibe and just wherever they are, they just really, they do not get along. They just really bum people out. And so we have a uh, solution to the problem of accidentally sitting Karen and Kevin at the same table. So we divide up a wedding into a series of tables, each with a series of seats that we are going to assign guests to. We've got a list of guests and they have a list of friends and a list of enemies. So we can think of this as a large connected graph. Uh, for each table, we have to go through and we assign guests to each table and then we assign each table a score. The way the scoring works, uh, we will have several different means of scoring, but the simple uh, method of scoring is each pair of friends there are, the table gets one point. In each pair of enemies there are, the table gets minus one points. So, for example, as you can see, John and Zach are sitting at the same table, and they are friends, so they get one point for the table. However, John and Annie are sitting at the same table, and they are enemies, so they get minus one points for that table. As you can see, this is a uh, random um, selection of uh, users, and the total score is minus four. So this wedding kind of sucks. Our first algorithm to solve this problem is backtracking, kind of the brute force solution, where we generate every possibility uh, that we can assign at the tables, and then we select the best table out of those bunch. The way we do this is we just start going through, we select one person for one seat, we select from the remaining people, we select from the remaining people, and so on, and we continue this all the way until we fill out everybody, we backtrack up a layer, selecting a different person, and we continue on that the entire time, keeping track of which assignment had the best possible scoring, and then using that one at the end. Our second algorithm that we implemented was a genetic algorithm, where we start out by giving just a completely random but complete assignment to the entire tables. And usually it's going to be pretty bad right off the bat. This random assignment gave a total score of one. But we do this a whole bunch of times to get a giant population that we then pick the best out of to do some crossover between and some random mutations. And hopefully, once we get a new population, those entries will be a little bit better in terms of score. We continue this over and over, and the score slowly starts to improve until we have the most optimal score. The third algorithm that we implemented was a greedy algorithm. So what we did for a greedy algorithm is we selected the person with the most enemies, so in this case Sarah, and then we immediately picked, or we added Sarah's enemies to the list of enemies for that table. We immediately picked one of Sarah's friends, in this case, John. We then repeated the process for John. We added John's enemies, and then um, we picked the next one of Sarah's friends, which was Zach. And we continued down this, and we made sure and every time we added an enemy, we would, uh, or added someone to the table, we would add the list of enemies to that table and then cross them off the list. And so eventually we would select the person with the most enemies who is still left and does not conflict at all with that table. And as you can see, it did pretty good on this run. It got a score of 10. And so we ran multiple experiments on a variety of tables using random data sets. We had three different ways of counting. We have the simple count, which we talked about before. We have a ruined table count where if where it checks if there's a single pair of enemies at the table. And if there is one, that table is just completely ruined and gets a score of zero. Otherwise, it counts up the number of friends that we have at the table. And then we have the min-max count, which takes the minimum number of friends that somebody has at the table and subtracts the maximum number of enemies that somebody has at the table to get the score. For all these algorithms, we did 10 iterations of either eight guests spread across four tables with a maximum of three friends per guest and a minimum or a maximum of two enemies per guest. And then for just greedy and generic, we did 10 iterations of 100 guests across 10 tables with a maximum of five friends each and a max of three enemies each, since those were able to complete in a much faster time than our backtracking. So here are our results. Uh, for the small table, um, the greedy algorithm was the quickest, uh, followed shortly by the genetic algorithm, and backtracking was by far the slowest, but also had a perfect score. Um, the large table, the um, 
the run times were relatively similar. The genetic or the greedy algorithm was still much faster and the accuracy um, was relatively similar across the board. We can see that the genetic algorithm beat the greedy algorithm sometimes, but not always. Now for the analysis of our results. Uh, looking through all of our data, backtracking was accurate, but it was way too slow for any significant data set. And by significant, that means pretty much anything larger than eight guests. And that's because it runs in omega of n factorial quantity squared time, which is really bad, so recommended that you don't use this one. The greedy algorithm ran incredibly fast since it functions in polynomial time, uh, but it doesn't give a 100% accurate result. But if the data set is small or simple, the result is usually pretty good and will work for whatever situation you need. The genetic algorithm is uh, is faster than backtracking, but it's still somewhat slow. Uh, and it and the good part of it is that it doesn't take a whole lot longer if your data set is larger. It has the ability to beat the greedy algorithm, but often doesn't unless it's on a larger or, co or more complex data set where the greedy algorithm would fail. Anyways, that is our project. Thank you for listening. Thank you.